Hello friends and fellow creators, Eric here. Today I'm taking you through my process of creating three stunning geode pieces in resin and acrylic paint. If you've been dying to create a geode of your own, but have found it way too daunting or don't know what materials to use or where to get them, I'm going to take you through step by step on how I crush my own glass, where I purchase my materials, and hopefully everything else you could ever want to know about how to make your own beautiful resin geode. In this tutorial, I'm using both canvas and cradled wood board, some glittery ink and various glitters, a needlepoint paint bottle for details, and some paint pens and glass markers. If you want to support my channel, you can follow me over on Facebook and Instagram at Eric Maz Art, or purchase original artwork or some affordable prints over at ericmazart.com. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe for new content every Maz Monday. All right, let's get to the video. First things first, got to crush all this glass how-to basic style. You'll see me just hammering. These are those decorative stones that you buy at the dollar store in a little bag. And I'm just crushing them up so that they can be the crystals in our geode pieces. As you can see, I have already pre-mixed my colors for this first geode. Since I had never made a geode before, I started out just working in acrylics without resin for my base layer and decided I was going to add resin later. I'm just pouring the colors on in bands and just tilting as I see fit. Then I go in with my needle tip bottle and just add some striping and details. I did another pour with my leftover paint on a smaller canvas. Here is just a quick pass of the finished pour. Now to leave them to dry and cure so we can add some resin. On to the next pour. Safety tip, you also want to make sure you are working in a well ventilated area with gloves and a face mask and or respirator when handling resin. Here is a quick mixing montage. You can see even sped up three times just how long it takes to mix each individual color. Be sure to set a timer and mix thoroughly, otherwise your resin will never cure properly and it will just stay tacky for the rest of all time. And uh, as you can see, whenever I thought there was too much glitter, I just added more because with geodes there can never be enough glitter. You'll notice in this piece I didn't prime the cradled wood board and I found that my resin wasn't as, a, uh, wasn't as opaque as I would have liked but I wanted to try it and see how I liked it with the wood showing through beneath the resin. You don't want to use any more than 10% pigment in your resin even when you're trying to achieve more opacity. I found that it, if I use any more than that, the resin turns really hot really fast and turns into this like big steaming gummy brick, so avoid doing that. Uh, instead, work in layers and just build on the opacity that way. You'll see I'm just working on the layers in bands, just like the first acrylic base piece, and adding glitter and crushed glass as I go directly into the wet resin. I also torch to allow the colors to blend and to pop any air bubbles that may appear as I go along. For the next piece, I decided to prime my cradled wood board with some white gesso because I could tell my colors were kind of translucent and I didn't want the wood to show through my resin like in the first piece. I lost some footage here but the application was the same. I used a combo of puddle pours and pouring in bands to get that geode effect, but I actually wasn't too crazy about this first layer so I'm going to be adding another layer later on. The embellishments are just royal blue glitter that I either apply by hand, just by dipping my hand in there and actually sprinkling it on the resin, or I put it inside of a piece of paper folded in half and pour it on that way so it's a bit more controlled and I can pour bands of glitter that way. And here I'm just building the second layers on these pieces 
and I actually went out and purchased fish tank rocks, like the rocks you put at the bottom of a fish tank. So the dark blue stones that I'm setting in the resin here, that's what those are. And now let's segue into how to clean off those acrylic pores we did earlier so we can apply resin. A lot of you have been asking me how to clean off canvases so that you can prepare them for resin and other finishes, so I just wanted to make a quick little video about how to do that. Uh, it doesn't require like a full length video, but I figured it was something that could definitely help some people out, so if you're looking for a guide on how to clean off your canvases so you can start applying res resin and uh, other stuff to your canvas without um, the paint not adhering, I've had that problem before, so I've gone to put a finish. And I'll show you an example of what it looks like when you don't clean it off. So when you don't clean your canvas first, after doing a pour and try to apply resin, you're gonna see you get all of these pockets. You see how it's all rippled in the resin there? And so if you want that smooth, glassy finish, you wanna make sure you're wiping all the silicone off your finish or you're gonna get these weird pockets all over your art. This was one of my first pours. Um, ever that I tried to put resin on and I didn't realize that you had to clean it. So I'm just going to show you what I do to clean off my canvas. So I just have a damp rag here. I just went and ran it under the water. Just doesn't have to be warm or cold, whatever. And I've got some just normal dish soap here. This is just like Dawn blue dish soap. I'm going to take a little bit and just kind of put it on here. A little tiny bit. See how much I put? Just like a little dab. I'm going to rub it in the towel like this so it's even all over. Let's do the small one first. I'm just going to take this, and these have actually cured, so the paint is totally dry. And it's going to go like this, all over. And you'll see it's not damaging the painting at all. It's just getting that thin layer of silicone off the top, so that once these dry, I can apply resin. I'm going to be turning these pieces into geodes, so I want to make sure they're really thoroughly clean. Okay. Again, I'm gonna just take that same section. You can just use a clean cloth if you want, just to be safe, but I just use the same cloth. Go in again. Do the same to this one. And you don't wanna to be too rough, uh, cause you don't wanna wipe off any of the paint, but you just wanna be thorough enough that you're getting off that silicone. It might help you to use a white rag too, because then you can see the residue coming off. I just didn't have a clean white rag to use. All of mine are contaminated. All right, and then once you've done that, you just wanna take a dry section of the rag and go back through and just dry it really well. And then you'll leave them to air dry, make sure they're totally dry and you can apply a resin finish to those with no pockets. And yep, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. All right, so here are those acrylic pieces ready for resin. I just apply a clear coat and start building onto the piece with crushed glass, crystals, rocks, and glitter from there. There was a point where I added the gold and was like, no, I went too far, I've ruined it. But I just kept on. Making these is so much fun and you seriously won't want to stop even if you make some mistakes along the way. And now for the last piece. I wasn't very happy with the way the acrylic base pour turned out for this one, so I decided to just scrap it and pour over it with a green and silver theme instead. This is probably my favorite one of the three finished pieces. You can see my confidence in making these had really grown over time.
And here they are, the dazzling trio. These have already sold, but I do make custom geodes and truly enjoy creating them. Let me know if you're interested in a geode of your own. You can find me at ericmossart.com or on Facebook and Instagram at ericmossart. All my links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like and share it with your friends. I love making tutorials and sharing what I've learned with all of you. Until next time, stop comparing, start creating, and have an amazing day.